What's going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. So I know that I'm recording this video right now during the treasure map and I know that everyone is very very much focused on that but we do have the information in regards to the upcoming Kazuna Clash versus Alba. So in this video we're going to talk about the 10 star difficulty which is the generic Kazuna. I will probably try and find some time to make a video in regards to the super boss because the super boss is, has a lot of a lot of discussion points, that is for sure. But today, we're going to be focusing on just the generic Kizuna where you can start building up your super boss tokens in order to actually challenge the super boss. Now, also, a forewarning, make sure to get into an alliance before the Kizuna starts so that you can actually work together with a team to take on the super boss as it is relatively difficult to do it solo. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. So first things first, let's go ahead and have a look at the strength version of the Kizuna, which I believe is the first boss you'll be taking on. Now, you want to be building team around Free Spirit and Slasher characters here. Now, on stage two, we're going to have to deal with some special bind, which is why we have Beppo on the team. And uh, his double special will allow you to get a full board of Tandem slots and also get around the special bind to give you chain-related stuff. That should be good enough, uh, especially because you can activate the Super Tandem of Law with that activation too. So that should give you enough damage to get through. Now you may see that we're running some, some weird type units here because when you actually reach the boss stage, there's a lot of different gimmicks. So there is 8 turns of despair and 5 turns of paralysis. Now with both of these captains, we can actually resist both of those debuffs. So it makes this team a lot more accessible for people that have these units. Also there is a tandem slot barrier. And, you know, generating tandem slots could be difficult, but uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. And then also, after level 31, the boss inflicts a further turn of despair, a further turn of paralysis, which doesn't matter because the captains ignore it. But you will also potentially encounter situations where the enemy is going to have the capability of changing into a dex type. Now, I'm not a big fan of this at all. I think color changing bosses in a Kizuna is one of the most degenerate things that they could ever come up with. So I'm really not a fan of that at all, but it is one of the mechanics. So it is a strength boss, so you want to build quick units with it, but they have the potential to become a dex unit. So you want some strength units as well. And we'll talk about another team in just a moment that is able to get around that a bit easier. But with this team, of course, we've got Roger's super type to generate us the full board of slots. And then, of course, after that, we'll be able to use Law's super tan or super class effect to generate a tandem slot on himself. So that when you use the special of Odin to generate some Wano slots, he actually won't change Law's tandem slot. And that's really good because you do need a tandem slot in order to pierce the barrier of the opponent. And also, you do need it to trigger the super tandem. So that's, uh, that's obviously going to be a really useful mechanic to have. And then, of course, we have Luffy Zora, which can give us a chain lock mechanic and we've got Robin which can give us a color affinity boost so it's able to get the job done for sure um, obviously not the most uh, efficient team out there especially in terms of super boss coins because normally you'd want to be building with the top boosters to give you as many super boss coins as possible so ideally building a team around friend captain Zora is probably the best way forward so looking at a little bit of a different scenario here, this one is using Odin and Toki. Now, the really good thing about Odin and Toki is because, you know, you can have them be the quick unit to take on the strength boss, or you can switch them into Toki to be a strength unit to take on the dex variation. So I believe they really want you to use Odin and Toki in this team comp here. Friend Captain K-Dad because they just have fantastic synergy. And special bind, we have the Rizo to get around that. He also locks our slot so we can use the super class of, of uh, K-Dad to generate us the Wano and Tandem slots, which will be awesome. So we have huge damage on Battle 2, and we'll have big damage on Battle 3, as the enemy doesn't change the slots on the last stage. So that's really, really big for us. Odin and Toki special remove all the turns of Despair and Paralysis that's inflicted to the crew. And of course, we can switch and change them to whichever color that we need them to be. So that's obviously fantastic. And due to the fact that K-Dad with their super class are able to generate some Tandem slots, we can pierce that barrier, which is obviously very good. So Odin and Toki and K-Dad together just kind of deal with everything and then the subs are basically up to you now K-Dad uh, obviously give you an attack boost and we have the Odin and Toki which can give us the color affinity boost and so you just need like a huge orb boost in this team scenario we've got Momonosuke which is able to generate an orb boost for our slashes chain boost uh potentially you know with, with uh, Kawamatsu you've got Izo Okiku as well which can be a chain lock I mean obviously it's conflicting there but you know you want you want some units that can also potentially trigger this super tandem of Odin and Toki and then of course the final tap of K-Dad allows you to get big damage too so that's just another team scenario you can think about in terms of building but once again as i said using a team built around zoro probably is the best way forward 
So let's go ahead and uh, change things up and look at the quick variation this time. So with this one, decks and quick characters receive cooldown. So building around that is obviously what you want to do. Now, Battle 2 is really annoying. There's a lot of gimmicks. So there is a bind, eight turns of it to the top and the bottom row. You get a full board of recovery slots and recovery slots are treated as badly matching for four turns. So we're getting around that with the two characters in the middle row, which is going to be Wiper. Now, Wiper can make the unfavorable slots disappear by five turns, so that is fantastic for us. And then here, his special gives a color affinity boost, which is fine. But then we've also got Sanji on the team, and uh, this other Sanji is the crewmate. He will remove the bind for us, and he also gives us a chain boost. So then when we move into the final stage, there is one big uh, glaring issue with this stage, is that there is damage limiter. Obviously, if you're using the new Zor and you have his captain fully maxed out, you're able to bypass that effect completely. But in this team comp, we're just using Frankie and his captain action in order to get the uh, general Frankie to bypass the damage limiter altogether. Now, that isn't really the best damaging way in order to do as much damage as possible, but it's the most accessible way to get around the damage limiter. Otherwise, you have to kill the boss over two turns, and that's never really fun to do, because typically, the boss will do additional things after the turn is completed, though that's not listed here, but there's a very good chance the boss will do something after the first turn, but we'll have to wait and see. Now, there's five turns of defense up, which becomes six turns post level 31. Sanji, friend captain, obviously deals with that. He removes seven turns of it, as well as gives us a chain boundary. He gives a full board of recovery slots. And, of course, he has his uh, base attack boost. And then his super class can give another chain boost as well. Just really good damage coming from the friend captain. And when you use Frankie as your general Frankie in this captain action, and you have a fighter character on your team, they actually have even more damage. So the Sanji friend captain is going to do very very good damage when you reach the final stage now there is resilience as well now on this team we have this rare recruit vista uh, but ultimately you would want to have some type of way to get around the resilience whether it be a support effect that does end of turn damage or a special that does end of turn damage or some type of special that can remove up to six turns of resilience which i know is not the easiest thing to do out there but you do need a way to get around the resilience. Luffy Yamato are only here just to provide color affinity and an orb boost, right? So they're not particularly needed, but they do add a lot of additional damage to the crew. So anyways, that's one particular way that you can get around this quest. So this next team here, uh, do note that this friend captain is just a red recruit quick Azor, but realistically, you'd be using the new legend Zoro from the anniversary as the friend captain here. And by using Luffy Yamato as the captain, we can, we can actually just completely ignore the bind that's inflicted to us on battle two. And another thing is that as soon as we start the quest, we can activate Zoro's captain action to get the semi buffed version of his captain ability, which means when we reach battle two, the enemy will give us a full board of recovery slots and and treats them as badly matching but with Zora's slightly buffed captain or should I say his level 2 captain ability actually changes recovery slots into Wano which allows you to generate even more Wano slots for the crew so that's a really nice way actually to uh, build up that that gauge on, on, on Zora for sure uh, of course it's not really going to be that easy to get that gauge max we do have Hiori on the crew completely replaceable but Hiori has a really cool effect where you know she generates a full board of Wano slots at the start of the fight which then allows you to consume you know the five wano slots when you reach battle two you get even more wano slots which can get his uh captain ability essentially to max gauge when you reach the final stage and when you do get to the final stage and his gauge is completely maxed out you can get the level three captain ability of zoro which does allow you to essentially go through the damage limiter which is what we want to do uh, we do have sanji to get around the defense we got luffy yamato to avoid the bind and have a really good captain ability of course and the free to play roger on this team with double special does get around the enemy's resilience after level 31 but robin on this team is completely replaceable as well she just provides a conditional boost but you can just replace her with another resilience booster so you can have two resili resilience boosters if needed as i said you know hiori isn't really needed but allowing you to build up the enemy gauge much quicker is going to be very important in this quest to get it done 
So then we get to look at the final fight here of the normal Kizuna. Now, I do want to say once again that the friend captain here is not meant to be Elizabello. This is uh, Legend King, the new Legend King or Legend Alba, however you want to say it. So just want to make sure you guys know exactly what's going on here. So cooldown for Free Spirit and Driven. And on Battle 2, there's eight turns of Despair and a full board of block slots. So the way that this team's getting around that is that we have the special of Sasaki with double special launch can remove the Despair, also give us color affinity. Yamato special changes block slots into Wano and then Yamato's super type becomes available we can launch that in order to lock our slots for one turn and then we can also use the special of Moria which can give us an orb boosting effect and then when we reach the next stage he gives us a pretty big color affinity boost which works out quite well now when you reach the last stage there is five turns of paralysis but that actually does become six turns after level 31 we have Bedge on the crew to get around that and he also provides us with an orb boost now you do see see that for we do have who, who's who is our attack booster here now the big thing here is is that if you now it, it says here if, if the behavior of this character changes when they're not at full hp which is strange right so if they're not at full hp they actually have an intimidate now i'm not too sure if this means if you use a damage dealing special the enemy will react and then apply an intimidate to you so it's going to be interesting to see how this works and this would also mean if you end up doing a support quest uh in, in the middle of a kizuna then when you go into a fight, the enemy's not going to be at full HP, right? So that means that he's automatically going to start with this uh, with this Intimidate. So we're going to have to see how this Intimidate works. But I basically wanted to make it so I didn't have any damage dealing specials on the crew, aside from the friend Captain King. So the friend Captain King, when you launch his special, does do damage to the opponent, and he does give you a chain boost. And of course, the enemy will have the effect that can remove um effects by one turn you can remove attack boost color affinity as well as chain addition and of course if you activate any of those effects while he has his intimidate up and it's only a one turn buff then the intimidate will remove one turn of it which can completely remove remove certain buffs from your crew so you do have to be very careful about that it really comes down to how efficient or how the intimidate works right but another thing as well is because we've locked our Wano slots from stage 2 into stage 3, we're going to have a full board of Wano slots, which we can use to pierce the barrier of the final boss stage. And after level 31, the enemy will give you a full board of super block slots, but they can't do that when you have Wano slots. So it's very important that you get like a full board of like rainbow, Wano, or something like that when you move into this boss stage. Otherwise, the opponent can do really nasty things to you. And then, of course, this last team here is essentially going to be using both captains as the new Legend Alba. And what we'd be doing is, is we'd be using one of our Alba specials on Battle 2. Um, but you want to make sure that you actually use his super type first. His super type will give him a guaranteed Wano slot. The special of him will give you a full board of Wano slots. And then with the custard support attached to Alba, you'll be able to, uh, you know, carry those Wano slots into the last stage. Which does mean that you won't get tandem slots to activate a super tandem with this team scenario for example but at the end of the day super tandem on a normal boss isn't as important but potentially on a super boss you may need it later on down the road but with this team here you know again to remove the paralysis we have the jack support on queen so when we launch queen special it will remove an additional turn of paralysis and then with the black maria sub here it actually will remove a further five turns which is a total of six and we have the Wano slots to pierce the barrier, which of course is very important. And that's like pretty much it. You know, we basically just get the job done. We got big damage and we got chambers, we got color affinity, obviously versus Kaido, good synergy there. And we're able to kill the boss pretty comfortably. And we do have Uta here for the final tap, not ultimately required. Of course, Uta is completely replaceable, but it's just another unit you can put on for a really strong final tap that is stronger than versus Kaido's, you know. But either way, it's another team that you can get done if you're able to pull the Legend King. And with that, that is going to conclude this video today. Thank you so much for watching. And if you guys did enjoy the video, make sure to go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. On that, guys, I will see you guys within the next video.